Welcome to this overview of PXF Deep Defocus version 1.1. So this video will only cover the new features for PXF Deep Defocus 1.1. If you need a full uh, video about setting up Deep Defocus from scratch, you should have a look at the video about uh, version 1.0 that will be linked in the description. So let's go down the list of the new features here. The first new feature is automatic deep slices. So that's very uh, convenient. So let's create a deep uh, defocus and connect it to our deep image here, like so. And enable our overlay with Q. Go in the main tab here and I can focus on the yellow sphere here in the middle. Let's increase our size to make the defocus more obvious. Here we go. So now, uh, compared to the previous version, we just skipped a bunch of steps. In the in version 1.0, we needed to go under deep slices and configure our deep slices. This is not absolutely necessary anymore because we now have an option called automatic deep slices. So this is inspired by the bokeh node from uh, the foundry. Uh, and what it does is it creates automatically two slices and it sets the boundary between the slices at the focal point. So uh, it creates a slice from the focus point to infinity and another slice from the camera to the focus point. And in many cases, uh, this is enough to give a reasonable uh, result. So this is uh, a way, a shortcut in a sense. You can still manually set up your slices if you need more control. And for more complex shots, definitely you will need to set up your slices manually. But for simpler shots, you can use automatic deep slices at the very least to get started. Another uh, new feature is called uh, in-paint depth channel. So if we turn it off, we can see that I have an artifact here on the edge. So this happens when we have our depth channel abruptly going to infinity. So in this case, our depth channel goes from a few inches in front of camera to infinity, and that creates an artifact on the edge here. So uh, if you turn on in paint depth channel, this should extend our depth channel and not have that hard transition to infinity. Uh, I expect this feature to stay on, but in case it creates any problems, uh, you can always turn it off here. Uh, another uh, very useful feature is called a uh, single slice. So now we can inspect our slices uh, manually. Um, to, do, to show you that, I'll switch to manual deep slices and I'll use the deep slice view here. I'll pick my near on the front and my far here in the back. And I just want, let's say four slices. Here we go. So now we can inspect the slices manually. So if I go back to my result view here and I pick single slice, I can see the background and then one slice closer to camera, closer still and the closest slice. So now I can inspect the slices manually, which makes debugging complex scenes much easier. So you can see what's happening behind objects, for example. So if you're not sure if your deep image really has the, the back samples in the file, you can use single slice to inspect what's going on in the background. So what's happening under the hood really is we have four defocuses. So one, two, three, four. And these four images with their alpha channels are combined together with a series of merges. And these merges now by default are set to disjoint over before they were set to over by default. And that's because when you have a continuous plane, like a ground plane or a wall or something like that, when you were set to over, we ended up with those uh, dark edges, those dark lines. If we use disjoint over, we have a much cleaner um, transition here. It's not perfect still. It's still a tricky thing to do, but it's, uh, nice, uh, it's nicer than it used to be. Another new feature is called pick camera. So under uh, lens simulation, uh, we can now pick the values from a camera node. So if I enable lens simulation, I still have manually to set my units. So this scene was built in inches and I can 
get the focal length f-stop and uh, film back width from a camera node uh, uh, the f-stop is optional because often this value is not set uh, properly but if i want to pick all three i will include the f-stop select a camera in the node graph and click pick camera and you notice that all three values have been inherited from the values of my camera here so that makes setting up a uh, deep defocus with real units much faster you don't have to uh, manually open the camera and go fetch the values by hand let's have a look at a different image here so i have a uh, chessboard rendered in deep um, and i've already set up a deep uh, defocus for it so uh, we have new view types available so in the past we only had deep slices so that's still available we can see our deep slices we also have a new mode called focal plane so that tells me which part is in focus and which part isn't so everything that's in focus will be green everything behind the focus point will be blue and everything in front of the focus point will be red so that enables me to quickly see my focus so i can tell if my focus point is animated or not so in this case i want to rack focus from the the king to the pawn here so i can quickly see my focus animation Another uh, view mode is called Z Defocus uh, Layers, and this is very similar. Same thing, blue means behind the focus point, red means in front, and green means in focus. But this informs me of the amount of various defocuses that are happening inside the Z Defocus nodes. So do not confuse the layers with the slices, they're different. The slices are deep crops and the uh, uh, layers are internal settings of the Z defocus nodes uh, inside the PXF deep defocus. So you can adjust those layers by using the new layer controls here at the bottom. If I turn off automatic layer spacing and decrease the amount of layers, you can see the bands become much thicker. So all the pixels inside a given band will have the exact same amount of defocus even though this might not be realistic because in theory you know as the chessboard is moving away from the camera it should have less and less uh, defocus or more and more defocus now all these pixels will have the exact same amount of defocus so this is a loss of precision for sure but a huge gain of performance so if you don't have things that are moving towards camera or you're not animating the uh, focus point you can get away with quite a few less depth layers so i've rendered a two versions here one set to 10 layers and one set to 180 layers this is literally 18 times slower to render and on a still frame it's really hard to know which one is which however if you animate the camera or you animate the focus point you will see the difference right away so i've animated a rack focus that moves from the background the the king here to the pawn in the foreground and if you play it back you can see there's a huge difference between them so if you have too few layers usually the telltale sign is you'll have areas that are sticking that are not moving when they should be moving so pay attention for example to this area here you expect this little bokeh circle to gradually become smaller and smaller as the focus comes closer but you'll notice that it's sticking so when you you're moving you can see there's multiple frames where that little uh, circle here is not changing when it should be changing so i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 16 17 18 19 frames that are uh, not moving when they should be moving so uh, that means i'm 18 or 19 times under sampled in my layers so that's why i came up with the 180 uh, number here uh, the maximum number of layers is 256 layers this is a foundry limit this is not a pixel fudger limit i'm not sure why that number is limited but one thing for sure if your uh, defocus is uh, steppy or strobey or uh, areas are sticking you might want to investigate how many layers so now deep defocus enables you to adjust those values here so this is quite a difference between the two versions here 
Finally, we have a new option called Preserve Bounding Box. So this is useful if you have valid pixels outside of the frame inside of your bounding box. So uh, by default, a Deep Defocus will crop your frame uh, to uh, increase performance, but you can enable a Preserve Bounding Box and now you will process all the pixels outside of the frame. This can become useful if you want to do a lens distortion after the defocus. If you don't preserve the bounding box, for example, you will have black outside here. So this is the this is the result you would have gotten with version 1.0. Or if you have preserve bounding box off, if you enable preserve bounding box, then you have pixels outside of the frame are rendered as well as pixels inside of the frame. So there you go, that was the overview of PXF uh, Deep Defocus 1.1. If this is your first time uh, hearing about PXF Deep Defocus, watch the uh, video for version 1.0. I'm sure you will learn a bunch of things there as well. And uh, that's it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.